In our previous presentations, we understood the time complexity and the space complexity in details. Now, in this lecture, we will understand commonly used logarithms and summations while doing the analysis of algorithms. So, let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The first topic of this lecture is understanding logarithms. First, we will understand basics of logarithms and then we will understand some of the commonly used logarithms while doing the analysis of algorithms and then we will understand some of the commonly used summations while doing the analysis of algorithms. So, these are the topics of this lecture. So, let's get started with the basics of logarithms first. So, what is a logarithm? In order to understand what is logarithm, let's take the general form of logarithm which is log A base B. Log A base B is the general form of logarithm. Here A represents the argument of the logarithm and B represents the base of the logarithm. But what is the meaning of log A base B? Log A base B tells how many times we need to multiply B by itself in order to obtain A. So, this is the meaning of log A base B. In order to properly understand this meaning, let's take one simple example. Let's say we want to find log 128 base 2. The argument of logarithm is 128 and the base is 2. Log 128 base 2 tells the number of times we need to multiply 2 by itself to obtain 128. How many times do we multiply 2 by itself to obtain 128? We need to multiply 2 by itself 7 times to obtain 128. Because 2 power 7 is 128. So, log 128 base 2 is 7. I hope now it is clear what is the meaning of logarithm. So, logarithm tells the number of times we multiply base by itself to obtain the argument. This means we must always look at the power of the base. In this case, 2 power 7 is 128. Hence, 7 is the logarithm of 128 base 2. So, now as we have understood what is the logarithm, let's move to the next topic where we will discuss some of the commonly used logarithms while doing analysis of algorithms. The first commonly used logarithm is log A base A which is equal to 1. Why? How many times do we multiply A which is the base by itself to obtain the argument A? We need to multiply A by itself only one time to obtain A. That is why we are getting 1 here. A power 1 is A. So, logarithm of A base A is 1. Let's take one simple example. Let's find out what is log 10 base 10. 10 power 1 is 10, therefore 1 is the logarithm of 10 base 10. The second logarithm is log 1 base a which is equal to 0. Why are we getting 0 here? Because a power 0 is 1. Let's take one simple example. Let's find out what is log 1 base 10. Log 1 base 10 is 0 because 10 power 0 is 1. And we must always look at the power of the base. Base here is 10 and argument is 1. 10 power 0 is 1. That's why we are getting 0 as the result of log 1 base 10. Now let's move to the third logarithm. The third logarithm is log a power b base c which is equal to b times log a base c. You need to remember this property of logarithm and it is the most frequently used logarithm. Log a power b base c is equal to b times log a base c. The power comes before logarithm 
and that's why we are getting b times log a base c now let's take one example to properly understand this logarithm let's find out what is log 10 power 2 base 10 if we apply this property of logarithm 2 should come before logarithm so this is equal to 2 times log 10 base 10 what is log 10 base 10 we just saw log 10 base 10 is 1 so we will get 2 times 1 which is equal to 2 so log 10 power 2 base 10 is 2 let's move to the fourth logarithm log a b base c is equal to log a base c plus log b base c let's take one simple example to understand this logarithm let's find out what is log 1000 base 10 we can rewrite log 1000 base 10 as log 100 base 10 plus log 10 base 10 according to this property 1000 can be written as 100 times 10 and because of this we can get log 100 base 10 plus log 10 base 10 now how many times do we multiply 10 by itself to obtain 100 2 times therefore log 100 base 10 is 2 what about log 10 base 10 log 10 base 10 is 1 so we will get 2 plus 1 which is equal to 3 so 3 is the answer for log 1000 base 10 and it is true as well how many times do we multiply base 10 by itself to obtain the argument 1000 3 times here also we are getting the value 3 now let's move to the fifth logarithm the fifth logarithm is log a divided by b base c which is equal to log a base c minus log b base c so when we have multiplication we need to add and when we have division we need to subtract let's take one simple example let's say we want to find what is log 100 divided by 10 base 10 this can be rewritten as log 100 base 10 minus log 10 base 10 what is log 100 base 10 we just saw it is equal to 2 and log 10 base 10 is 1 so we will get 2 minus 1 which is equal to 1 so this is the result of log 100 divided by 10 base 10 we applied this property log a by b base c equal to log a base c minus log b base c now here comes the sixth logarithm log a base b is equal to 1 by log b base a so here we have log a base b and we can rewrite this as 1 by log b base a here base becomes argument and argument becomes base now here is the simple example let's say we want to find what is log 2 base 32 we can write this as 1 by log 32 base 2 base becomes argument and argument becomes base what is log 32 base 2 log 32 base 2 is 5 because 2 power 5 is 32 therefore we will get 1 by 5 here and what is 1 by 5 1 by 5 is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 is the answer for log 2 base 32 now here comes the seventh logarithm log a base b is log a base c divided by log b base c so we can use a new base c for both log a and log b so log a base b can be written as log a base c divided by log b base c now here comes an example let's say we want to find what is log 256 base 16 log 256 base 16 can be written as log 256 base 2 divided by log 16 base 2 i am assuming the base is 2 for both these logarithms what is log 256 base 2 how many times do we multiply 2 by itself to obtain 256 we need to multiply 2 by itself 8 times so we will get 8 as the result for log 256 base 2 what about log 16 base 2 log 16 base 2 is 4 
So here we are getting 8 by 4 which is equal to 2. So log 256 base 16 is 2. It can be observed that these properties of logarithms can help us in simplification of the logarithms. It is easy to find log 256 base 2 and log 16 base 2 compared to log 256 base 16. So whenever in need, we can apply these properties. Now here comes the 8th logarithm. A power log B base C is equal to B power log A base C. So we can switch A and B. So A power log B base C becomes B power log A base C. Here is an example. Let's say we want to find 100 power log 16 base 10. This can be written as 16 power log 100 base 10. What is log 100 base 10? Log 100 base 10 is 2. So we will get 16 power 2 which is equal to 256. So this is the result of 100 power log 16 base 10. So these are some of the commonly used logarithms. Now let's move to the next topic and let's discuss some of the commonly used summations while doing the analysis of algorithms. The first commonly used summation is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to n. This represents the sum of n natural numbers which is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2. And using the asymptotic notation, we can write theta of n square. So n into n plus 1 divided by 2 is equal to theta of n square. Why? We can expand this. n into n is n square and n into 1 is n. So we will get n square plus n in the numerator and in the denominator we have 2. We can also rewrite this as n square by 2 plus n by 2. 2 is the constant term so we can eliminate from both the fractions. We will get n square plus n. Out of n square and n, n square is the dominating term. Therefore, asymptotically we can say n into n plus 1 divided by 2 is theta of n square. Now here comes the second summation. 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square up to n square is n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6. This represents the sum of the squares of first n natural numbers. And this is equal to theta of n cube. Why? We can expand this fraction the same way we expanded this and we will observe that n cube is the dominating term. Hence, we can asymptotically say that n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 divided by 6 is theta of n cube. Let's see the third summation. The third summation is 1 cube plus 2 cube plus 3 cube plus 4 cube up to n cube. And this is equal to n square into n plus 1 square divided by 4. This is the summation of cube of n natural numbers. And this is asymptotically equal to theta of n power 4 because of the same reason. We need to expand this fraction and then we will observe that n power 4 is the dominating term and hence we will get theta of n power 4 as the result. The fourth summation in this list is 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 4 and so on up to 1 by n. This summation is equal to log n base e and therefore we can write it as theta of log n. We do not have to worry about the base here in the asymptotic notation. Hence we can write theta of log n here. The fifth summation in this list is nc0 plus nc1 plus nc2 plus nc3 and so on up to ncn. What does this C represent? C represents the combination. The combination from permutations and combinations. This summation is equal to 2 power n and 2 power n is asymptotically equal to theta of 2 power n. So these are some of the commonly used summations while doing the analysis of algorithms. So we are done with this topic, commonly used summations. And this means we are done with this lecture. 
Okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one